and welcome back to the Styles UK YouTube channel. Today, I'm super excited to be bringing you a brand new series in collaboration with artworking expert Dane Clement from Styles artworking for custom heat transfers. Whether you're new to using heat transfers and want to know exactly how to create the perfect artwork or you're just looking to improve your skills, we have everything you need to create perfect artwork for your custom heat transfers in this series. In today's episode of artworking for heat transfers, Dane is going to be showing you the difference between vector and raster files for your custom heat transfer artwork. <laughs> Hi, Dane Clement here with Stalls. Let's talk about artwork and what we need to know in order to get a proper transfer printed. There's only two types of artwork that we need to worry ourselves with. One would be vector artwork, the other would be raster artwork. Now with the popularity of AI generated art apps out there, raster artwork is becoming very much more utilized and uh, important. So let's take a look and see how we handle each of those things. So here we have an Illustrator file, and it looks like a typical, normal, two-color uh, illustration, right? Uh, if we look at this thing in Illustrator, and I go to View Menu, and I come down to Outline, I can see lines, right? So now if I grab one of these, um, my white arrow tool here, and start clicking them around, you see I have my lines and nodes and that sort of thing. That immediately tells me that this is my vector file. Now... If I have the same image, but it looks like it's in, uh, looks like this, well, that looks like exactly the same image, right? Well, this one happens to be, if I look at my file size, I'm in Photoshop now, uh, it is a PNG file, which is an RGB image. And if I look at my layers, I see is, is it, all it is is a background layer and it's got a lock on it. So it's on a white background. So right now, this image, while it looks exactly like my vector file, it is not. This is a raster file. And in order for me to be able to just select this gray area and colorize it, I can't do that. I'd have to use other Photoshop tools uh, to make that happen. So that's the difference. But now let's take a look and see what this would look like inside of Illustrator. So let's go back to Illustrator here. And I'm just going to grab this one and move it up. Now let's go to File Place, and we'll go find that PNG file right here. And I'll place it inside Illustrator. Now, uh, if you notice, I'm going to just kind of size it up, sort of get it close. Now, that looks pretty close to the same thing, right? This is exactly the same file. It's almost the same size. I can size it down perfectly if I wanted. But this is what I wanted to show you. If I go right back to that same view menu and come down to Outline, now look at the difference, right? So I can see lines here, so I know that this is probably my vector version because I got my nodes and my lines. Whereas this one's just a rectangle with an X in it. That's the quickest way to tell what kind of file you have. If a customer gives you something, that sort of thing, they say, hey, um, here's my vector file, but they give it to you, you bring it into Illustrator, it's got a line or just an X through it, then you know that is not a vector file. That is an image file, some sort. It could be a JPEG, it could be a PNG, whatever. They all look the same uh, you know, when you're looking at it in this view format, right? So let's just take a look at a couple of other examples. So if I go to just File Menu Open, and I'm just going to hit my shortcut space bar here probably to, to take a look at these. Let's go to Sharkies. All right, so here's an original, right? That would be a raster file. See, it's a PNG uh, this is actually on a transparent background, and you can always tell that if you just sort of look in the background. Anytime you hold my space bar, I'm in a Mac, so I just, I'm just i quick previewing it. Uh, pops up, and I can sort of kind of see like this white outline of my, um, of my page. And over here, the darker area, you can sort of see this thing around it. That just tells you that it's transparent, right? So now I'm going to just hit my down arrow key or just come over here and take a look at my Illustrator file. That would be my Illustrator black line that we could use, right? And then I can come over here um, and you take a look at a PNG file. This is something that I could use my full color image and in Photoshop add some, some cool text with some water treatments in there, some outlines and that sort of thing to build this logo. And then I can also, uh, this is my Photoshop file for it, which I can show you here in a minute. Uh, I'll show you all the layers and stuff. And this one here is just a PNG of a vector file. And this would happen to be my Illustrator file. 
right, of that same thing. So now this is an illustrator version. If I go to the view menu and I come down to outline, you can see all my, my bits and pieces, right? I can click on it. You can see that there's nodes and that sort of thing. So that tells me that this is my vector version. And let's go ahead and um, go to Photoshop and open up the layers on there just to show you the differences there, right? Uh, we come here and here. We're getting there. This is my PSD file. I hit open. So now if you look over here on the right-hand side in my, my layers panel, you see all the layers that we use to create this. So my original image is here. Um, down here at the bottom, we have, you know, I can just literally turn them on and off just so you can see how the thing was built, right? This one has a, a special effect on it, that sort of thing. So you can, that's the difference. And in, in actually, it's a, it's a difference in the typical look that you would see. Like a raster file can have all these shadows and highlights and this cool illustration stuff. It's much more details as far as that's going. And your Illustrator file, this is a pretty standard and typical look. Now, you can get blends and gradients and all kind of crazy stuff in vector uh, format, right? Uh, the problem with that, or potential problem with that, is if you have a lot of gradients and a lot of pasted in size and clipping mass and all this sort of stuff, the file can get really complex and it could choke when it prints. So if you create a really complicated vector file and you want to have some transfers printed, then I would recommend creating that vector file and getting it to the size that you want and maybe exporting that as a PNG file and sending that to be printed because uh, we'll be able to take that PNG file and convert the colors and get you pretty accurate color um, with less chances of some gradients dropping out or your strokes and your outlines not um, sizing properly and that sort of thing. So. Uh, basically that's the difference. That's what you would normally see between the differences between a vector and a raster file. And there you have it. Now you know the difference between vector and raster files. If your next step is to order your custom heat transfers, then head online to custom.styles.co.uk. We're releasing a brand new episode of Artworking for Heat Transfers every other week, so don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss them.